Hey guys, welcome to a really exciting video. Now we're starting here at a coffee shop, but not like one you've ever seen because we are at a giant playground for car, truck, and SUV enthusiasts. And we're gonna show you some really cool products you probably haven't seen and finish this day up by taking a V8 Wrangler for a ride. With me is Brian. How's it going? Dude, thank you for showing me around. So where are we at? We are at WeatherTech here in Broomfield, Colorado. It is our second factory store company wide where you can actually come in, touch the products and uh, see exactly what it is we do. Now I'm really excited about this because these products are made in the USA mm -hmm. and I think you'll see they're really high quality. And when you talk about attention to detail, even the coasters, even the coasters look like floor mats or floor liners. Now let's get into some of the cool stuff that you guys offer because we've got a ton of truck SUV accessories which are really neat. Should we hit it? Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Let's do it. First of all, let's gravitate toward this F-150. Now I think WeatherTech is cool because you're known worldwide for your floor liners, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of other stuff that you do. So walk me through some of the stuff on this Ford. Um, yeah, so we'll start from the bed, from actually the back of the bed. So right over here we've got our bump step. Um, you can get a leg up if you're trying to get into the bed or up onto the roof of let's say an SUV, anything with a two inch receiver. Um, it does also help in the case of an impact if you maybe back into a wall. I know there's certain pickup trucks that I always see that dent right here, <laughs> so this is a little bit of a feeler. But uh, then yeah, we'll jump into the bed right here. We've got our tech liner and for vehicles where it is available it does come with a liner for the tailgate as well but the tech liner is going to be it's going to be removable removable it's going to be adhered with uh, velcro so you can get it in and out um, a lot of times we have to spray out i mean any gap right here you're going to have to spray out that mag chloride eventually um, not so much with these aluminum beds but it will create corrosion if that gets trapped in there. Now what I like about this, right, is bed mats have been around forever, but the cool thing about the tech liner, right, is that it is tailored to your vehicle and you can see how it's formed around the bedside. So if you were like carrying a gravel or twigs or stuff that would usually make its way into those corners, mm -hmm. like a typical bed mat, this is not gonna have that issue. Um, very cool stuff. What is this up here? Talk me through this. So we've got our traditional tri-fold aluminum bed cover. So we can fold this back to give you access to two thirds of the bed. However, if you do need access to your full bed, this does have a quick release so you don't have to fully uninstall it. You don't have to fold it up against the cab. It's about a 60 pound lift to get this out, but it releases super quick. Now let's make our way to the side of the yes. vehicle um, because we are entering a whole world of accessories on the interior. Some stuff I've never seen before. Let's talk about some of the cool stuff. I've got the Purell holders that clip right into <laughs> the door pockets. It's the world that we live in now. So then we've also got these door protectors. They do come in two sizes for your smaller windows or your larger windows. But I know that my sister, any vehicle she has ever owned has claw marks on this oh, armrest yeah. because her dogs really like to put their head out the window. So um, if you have that same issue, as I get everything all disheveled here, but uh, if you have that same issue, this is definitely a great solution for you. Back of the seat protector, um, and then that pairs very well with the pet partition, as you see there in the middle. Let's talk about the liners, because these are made specifically for each vehicle, is that correct? Yes, yes they are. They're going to be laser measured, and it's a really cool process. You can see a lot of that on our YouTube channel through our promotions. Um, we do also make this under seat storage for your pickup trucks. Um, so if it doesn't come with that from the factory, then you can get that from us. Uh, it fits in laser measured as well. Um, it can go over the hump or not if you've got one of these Fords that do not have a drive shaft hump. Wow, very, I actually didn't realize. So that's not a factory Ford product. That's a, oh, wow. Correct, that's a WeatherTech product. Awesome. So the liners continue in the front and are there different types of liners? Are there gonna be different styles? Yes, so we've got the floor liner HPs on display in here and these are going to be an upgraded version of our traditional floor liner and for the vehicles that do have this available, um, what this is going to be is it's going to be an injection molded rather than our thermo, fold, thermo molded like we've done traditionally. Um, these ones will, you get a lot, lot more freedom to kind of shape these with the injection molding because you can do a two-sided mold. So you're able to kind of raise these edges right here. You're able to put things like traction nibs on the bottom of there. So if your vehicle does not have, let's say for example,
example, over on the passenger side, you don't have the factory retention posts. This will keep you from your passenger from driving that up into the firewall. Gotcha. All right. Super cool. Now we're along the front of the vehicle. What's going on with this guy? Uh, stone and bug deflector. So we do have a couple of products like this. This is our stone and bug deflector. It'll have a flanged edge to hopefully direct the air up around the windshield. So if you do get a small rock or a bug that's flying right here, hopefully it directs it up and over to, to safety instead of right into your windshield. We do also have one that's a little bit more sleek that'll just fit on the front here and that will be just the hood protector. Now, side note, and I do think that this is pretty cool as we walk through here, right? Like, I've been to like a lot of these cool product showrooms and typically you got all sorts of products, but if you're like a car enthusiast, well, I think you get pretty acquainted quickly that these folks are also car enthusiasts because there's not a lot of RS6 involved and G63s in one location. Yes, <laughs> yep. That's pretty funny. This might be the closest two of them have sat to each other in the U.S. I think you're right. <laughs> I think you're right. Now let's talk about the wilderness behind us. Um, and this has got a lot of cool accessories. And I know like being a dog owner, uh, especially one who is going to get old eventually, that this is pretty clever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. These will come in two sizes, two basically steepnesses. So the pet ramp will fold up and stow neatly. It does support up to 300 pounds, so especially your much larger dogs as well. Um, wow, 300 and, pounds. Mm -hmm. yep. That's a big dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a pretty easy lift as well. Um, very convenient to be able to stow away. Okay, and what's going on with this box here? What is this for? Um, so this is one of our, uh, this is our cargo tech right here. So it's basically going to just use the friction. Um, it works pretty well on carpet, but works really well with our cargo liner. But if this gets a little dusty, you can kind of wipe it off like an old pair of gym shoes. But it's to manage, I mean, as the box kind of shows right there, you can manage plants, you can manage your groceries, you can manage um, Costco with their uh, boxes that they put a lot of their stuff in. Now coming along this side here I think that these are pretty cool and they do something which I never even considered but explain the sunshades yeah so the sunshade is going to be a two-sided solution these are custom made to each vehicle so we'll ask you a whole bunch of questions about sort of the orientation of your your rear view mirror up front because they are custom made um, so Subarus with their eyesight and especially mm -hmm. a couple of those other OEMs that will have different size sensors to be able to manage like your, your cruise control and things like that. So they are custom made to each vehicle. You can either do just the windshield or the full vehicle kit two-sided. So this side will obviously reflect the sun. This side will uh, attract the sun and, and kind of hold in some of that radiation so that uh, it can, can break up frost as you're, you're starting your car up on the, the cold mornings. It's pretty clever, I never thought of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah very, absolutely, very clever. and they tuck straight in. Now, rack sack, what is the rack sack other than a really cool name? The rack sack will actually expand your cargo area by about 13 square feet. Okay. So um, it just straps up to your roof rack and uh, it is a soft water resistant sort of material. And yeah, just expands your cargo for those longer road trips where you need to free up some room inside. Now let's make our way to, I think, the vehicle that I'm most excited about. I mean, okay, it's hard not to ignore the, the 997 race car and the i8 on the wall. But this is very cool, so this is de definitely up my world. The Jeep Wrangler 392, and immediately something that's striking me, which I think looks pretty cool, are the mud flaps. Yes, yes, keep yourself from stonewashing your rocker panel and especially this Jeep 392. And there are no drill option. They'll come with new hardware, but uh, you'll be able to use the existing holes for your fender liners and things like that. We also have them on display in our F-150 as well. Super cool. Now this one has uh, kind of a similar seat protector to what we saw on the Ford, um, but this is my favorite thing. And I don't know if uh, Brian wants to talk about it again, but I love the seat cover for the baby seat. What did you call that? I call it the Cheerio Blast Zone. So, I mean, every one of my friends that has kids, there's just Cheerios kind of around here. This is a foldable material, so if you are mounting your child's seat over on the side, this will fold down. If you've got a, uh, a dancer in your life that's got that little piece to kind of cover that, it also keeps the little legs from imprinting into your upholstery, so definitely a great option for those of you with kids. Very cool. Now, what is behind the seat? Talk to me through this rack system. This is going to be the pet barrier, so it's... Um 
It's a uh, fencing kit and you are able to get more of these horizontal crossbars to be able to, uh, let's say you've got captain's chairs back here, but it basically just uses the pressure, kind of like a shower curtain rod to work from roof to floor of your vehicle. Well, this was really cool. I hope you guys kind of learned some stuff. I certainly did, but let's go ahead and get the Jeep out. We just got to hear it and see some of these products in action. This is the Jeep Wrangler 392, and here's why I think that this is going to be an uber mega valuable collector's item in the not too distant future. Now the 392 Wrangler, of course, has the 6.4 liter Hemi V8, and this was such a significant engine upgrade and option for this Wrangler. I remember talking to the engineers about the Jeep several years ago, asking would they ever put a V8, and they said, oh, it couldn't be done, it won't be done, it's uh, too big to package, it's too difficult to pass through safety, and then of course the Bronco came along, and <laughs> amazing how competition does stuff like this, but this really is a cool thing, um, and it's got a very complicated system called the Hydro Guide here, which I've talked to the engineers about, and is quite quite the magnificent piece of engineering. You see, the idea is you've got the, the hood scoop, which is supposed to force air into the intake, which you can see down here, but then these little flaps divert water that may get in there down around the engine versus into the intake. So that took a huge amount of engineering. It's also a ridiculously heavy piece of metal. Uh, this is one heavy hood. Now, they couldn't just take the 6.4 out of like the Charger, the Challenger, and put it in the Jeep and just call it a day. They had to do stuff like relocate the alternator up high so that you wouldn't get uh, water and stuff all mucked up in there. It also, I believe, has the oil pan off of the Ram um, 2500, 3500 with the 6.4 liter Hemi. I mean, it's just a, it's a, it's a big deal getting an engine like this into a production vehicle. Sure, folks have been doing upgrades like this uh, for quite a long time with the 5.7 and the 6.1 swaps and the 6.4, but a lot of times they were really kind of hokey and not very well done because one of the biggest issues with cramming a giant V8 into what is a small engine bay is cooling, and there was a ton of work done on the cooling to get this thing to stay cool on trails. Um, and this is actually bigger feat than like putting a five liter in a Bronco in my opinion, because if you look at like the design of the Wrangler, it's actually got a very narrow body. A lot of the width you see is based on the fenders, and of course you can't put V8 in a fender, so this was a pretty cool feat of engineering. So let's talk about some of the tow hooks and the overall design philosophy. Now they are painted gold, and you see that along the Rubicon too, and you see that up here in the 392. And I asked the head of Jeep, I said, why did you make this choice? And he said, well, we wanted to design the gold standard, so that's where the gold came from. Now, when this vehicle launched, you could only get it with the 33 inch tall tire or thereabouts. Now you can get it with the 35 if you get the optional, I think it's called the Extreme Recon Package. Behind the wheels and tires, you'll find Fox suspension, also tailored in the gold, which is pretty cool. And the interesting thing, right, is that the Jeep is known for being a rock crawler. It's known for being very articulate off-road, but it's not known for desert running. However, in Moab, we did take this thing over some pretty crazy dunes. Check out that video now. <laughs> you gonna have a drag race? <laughs> so from an interior and design standpoint, they did do some stuff to spruce up the inside of the Wrangler. So you do have color match stitching across the dashboard and you actually have a very different steering wheel. So it looks to be a standard Jeep wheel until you look at like the bolstering and you realize that it's significantly thicker than like your standard Wrangler. And then of course paddle shifters on both sides of the wheel. Now they are fairly small because you do still have the uh, FCA or in this case Stellantis buttons located behind the steering wheel, but it does have real paddle shifters to shoot through the eight gears on the transmission. Now of course transmission only option is the eight speed automatic. We do have a couple of um, other kind of unique 392 stuff like what my dad calls the raccoon button, but this is the exhaust mode, which really changed the sound of the Jeep and make it sound incredible or tame depending on where you're at. Like in the morning, you don't want to wake everybody up. also a little bit more bolstered and you still feel that bolstering through the WeatherTech um, uh, covers, which is nice. 
and yeah it's a nice place to spend time there are not too many options in this jeep compared to a lot of other models they pretty much come fully loaded and if you're going to spend 75 80 grand on the jeep you'd expect all these options standard this vehicle does come equipped with the beadlock capable wheels of course you can't run beadlocks on the street which is why they don't come equipped as beadlocks from the factory uh, the idea is right you don't want the bead of your tire trapped in the rim if you go in a big skid you want that bead to roll off the wheel and not to stay attached that's how you end up with rollovers but of course it is capable so if you want it to air down to like two psi you could make that happen and then of course wrangler with the 392 they also beef up the axles a little bit although i would i would like to see like a dana 60 on these from the factory i think that would be pretty cool instead of the beefed up 45s sorry 44s now in the back of the jeep um this one of course roof completely removed but lots and lots of space back here uh, they do give you the classic JL panel. Now the 392 is only available in the four-door configuration. Now the reason I think these are gonna be so valuable is A, they're very expensive and it is out of the reach for a lot of people. Even though they do sell, I think, everyone they can make, it still is a pretty rare model. And B, just the idea that you have a brick with a Hemi V8 in 2022 is insane. With the world moving toward electrification, I strongly believe that this is gonna be one of the last vehicles of its type in this world with just insane sound, crazy power in a relatively short wheelbase, small, lightweight vehicle. This is not gonna exist, in my opinion, in a second generation. If you want a 392, you should probably get one now uh, because eventually it's gonna die and then prices Maybe it will come down a little bit, but I have a feeling it might continue to rise. Anyways, let's get this behind the wheel. Um, we'll have Brian jump in and we'll see what it's like and what it sounds like. Now, Brian, you come from the pickup truck and SUV side of stuff. Yep. What do you think of Wranglers with V8s? I think that the Wrangler with the V8 is what they kind of should have intended it to do, you know? <laughs> I, well, the thing is, like, the last time they had one was in the CJ5 or something in, like, the 1980s. And that had a 200 horsepower, or 170. Yeah. And now they finally did it right. Oh, yeah. this is cool. This is and cool. I always loved the uh, inline six that they did for a long time. I mean, it wasn't particularly reliable. It had the same issues that Jeeps always have. But oh, coming after my four to, liter crowd here, it was easy to work <laughs> with. So if it did break itself, you you weren't stuck. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, and the rumor is that Jeep is actually going to bring back the. Um, the, the straight six, so super excited to see what they end up doing with that. I'm gonna scare the, the folks in the Prius. We'll do a little rip down the road and see what it's like. Now, if I recall, last time I drove one of these, the whole thing like cocks to the left when you floor it. Let's see if I got that right. Nope, it cocks to the right, I got it wrong. That's crazy though. Doing a four second zero to 60 <laughs> in a Jeep is uh, wrong. <laughs> I actually think that this engine in this tune sounds better than like the TRX and the supercharger. I don't know what they did to that exhaust system, but yeah. I mean, that is just brutal. Yeah, it kicks. Yeah. Do you think they're gonna do a Hellcat version? I wish. Well, Brian, I really wanna thank you for showing me around WeatherTech here. Yeah. This is a cool facility, and where are you guys located? We are located here in Broomfield, Colorado for our second factory store, but all the manufacturing is done in Bolingbroke, Illinois, which is a suburb of Chicago. Very cool, yeah, my dad's from that area. Um, anyway, fun fact. Yeah. But yeah, if you guys are in the Colorado area and you want the coolest and the latest and greatest in vehicle accessories, be it protection, be it fun stuff like the carrier Yetis, check out WeatherTech. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to see you down here.